what about inflammation? How do we even know about it? So it comes from the Latin word of inflammare, to set on fire. Okay, Hippocrates, and you may know who Hippocrates is, you may not. That is the one that um, we do the Hippocratic Oath when we graduate from medical school. And one of the primary uh, drivers or one of the main phrases is first, do no harm. And that's sort of been a guiding principle for me, which is why I started to question what we're doing in Western medicine and conventional medicine, because I felt like we were actually doing a lot of harm to people uh, by not empowering themselves to heal themselves and empowering their human body to do what it was built to do, which is to heal. So Hippocrates actually described inflammation, and this was the fifth century before Christ or BC. And he also named the terms such as edema and sepsis, terms we still use today. So nothing new under the sun, right? So since Hippocrates has been around, we've known about inflammation, edema, which is swelling, sepsis, which is whole body infection. So Aulus, I can't say this name because I don't speak Latin, Aulus Celsus, he was a Roman about 2000 years ago, okay? <clears throat> he, he named the four cardinal signs of inflammation. So the term that he used was rubor et tumor cum calor et dolor. So basically redness or erythema, swelling, heat, and pain. Those are your four cardinal signs of inflammation. If you go and ask your physician, what is inflammation? I bet you that's what they'll say. Oh, it's when you have redness, swelling, uh, it hurts, and it's warm. But that'll be probably the extent of the discussion. Galen, who was a physician of Marcus Aurelius, who was one of the Roman emperors, thought inflammation allowed blood to escape the arteries. And that had been the prevailing thought until scientific tools came about. So remember, before we had tools, uh, all we had was observation, following people, talking to them, and then maybe some anatomic dissections. It wasn't until we developed microscopes, things like that, and we'll talk about that now. And every day, more and more tools are being found, so we keep learning. So I, I try to stay on top of it for all of you guys. So the microscope was invented, and then that improved what we knew about microcirculation. We were actually able to then look at capillaries. And then we could discover things like blood clots and uh, new formation of blood cells or angiogenesis. And in 1893, think about that, how long ago that was, Menchnikoff described the different types of white blood cells, okay? Before that, we didn't even know there was more than one, if there was even one that we knew about. And he actually won the Nobel Prize for his work in the immune system. In the 19th century, Virchow, or Virchow, people say it differently, linked inflammation to atherosclerosis. Now think about that. Back in the 19th century, this guy Virchow linked inflammation to atherosclerosis, which is a plaquing in the arteries, which we now know inflammation is linked to atherosclerosis, as though it's some sort of new great discovery. The electron microscope after the regular microscope allowed us to understand even more because then we could see the cells, right? We couldn't, so we went from being able to see the capillaries and some placking to actually seeing what comprised the capillaries and the uh, placking. And then you go into things like, I mean, there's so many different things, functional MRI, different immune uh, studies, genetics, et cetera. 